all right so here is my at least the machine i want to use for my web application proxy okay so i'm going to go ahead and add another network card to it the purpose of adding another network card is to simulate a machine that is connected to both internal network and the dmz you understand so i'm going to call this one the dmz So here I have that. So you can see one, this is internal network. This is DMZ. You understand? I've got two network cards now on this machine. Okay. One of the things that I'm going to do over here is to show how we would normally uh you know set this up ideally the machine the web proxy is in the dmz and you have a firewall corporate firewall behind it you know so when you go through when you when you connect to your web application proxy you see you have to have a go through after uh, a web proxy you see you have to go through the firewall to be able to make a uh, connection with uh, any system internally so I have a choice here and I will quickly run you through the choices that I have. Uh, one of the choices I have is to install a domain controller on this machine itself. Set this machine up as a domain controller and also as a web proxy. You know, I could do that, uh, uh, but I have a, a couple of choices that I'm going to exploit here. Uh, just uh, let's wait up a little bit. So I have two machines here. This is this here. one over here, this other one. If I type my, actually I can use my, my PowerShell to show you IP config, and you can see which one, you know, is, this is my internal, and this is supposed to be my external, all right? Right now I don't have any DHCP service in this network, that's why you have 169.254. If I really want to... Uh, have this network service by DHCP. I've shown you how to do that. You can go to your virtual network editor and once this is fully loaded, you can see my NAT here and you can see why there's no DHCP there. But I can change that very easily and allow DHCP to service the NAT network. It's coming up. Me somewhat slow, but uh, so here I have my NAT here. I'm gonna say allow DHCP server to service that network. I'm gonna click apply and I'm gonna click OK. that is done there are a few things you can do I can this is a card I can grab the card I can rename it and call it DMZ you understand for clarity disable it and then restart it again This guy here, go to rename and call it internal. You understand? You see that? Helps you to be able to clearly identify them. So now when I look at them over, I can refresh my dashboard here. When I look at them, it's easier for me to kind of like know. See, you have DMZ now, you have internal. Got it? It's a lot easier to identify now. If the DHCP server is working that we activate, you will see the IP address now is different. It's now 192.168. Blah, blah, blah. You see that? Okay. So we know we're good now. So one thing I could do, I could go ahead and simply, and I know that this machine have access 
to Perkins because it's connected to it on one hand. So one thing I could do is I can go ahead and go to my manage, add roles and features, and then go to role base here, and then go ahead and install remote access. Okay. Remote access, go to next. Go to next here. Now I want to select web application proxy. Okay. And then go to next here and go ahead and install. Now you will realize that soon we're going to run into a situation where this guy is going to need a certificate just like the other ones because he needs to be able to establish a trust you know between the two machines they need to trust each other and if it doesn't trust each other there will be a problem so i will i will show you one uh, example uh, one quick way to do that While this installation is going on, I'll flip over to my ADFS here. So this one is fully installed. So now we have a ADFS that is functioning. That's my ADFS here. What is one thing I can do here? I can actually export this key. I can go to all tasks and export it. Export the certificate. And I can call this one export, export the private key. If you do not export the private key, it's not going to work for uh, the machine work, for our work. And here I can actually say set up for Perkins administrator and it will work. But that is if I'm within the domain. But if this machine is not my domain, I will have to come over here and just use a password. Pass. And I can go to next here, and I can save this in on my desktop here. Call this one Certi. Cert. Go to save. Go to next. Go to finish. Export successful. So what I've done here now is I have exported my certificate over from ADFS. I can copy that certificate. And over here, I'm going to copy that certificate on my desktop here and here's certificate here I go to my WAP and I'll copy this certificate from here and go inside my WAP that, has, that is still installing a rather slow installation and copy the certificate over here you see that you know in real life you probably might have to copy it on a jump drive uh, have one way or the other to send it one way so I haven't done this one this solution is still going on I can go ahead and install this cert install it on the local machine go to next okay and it's gonna tell you specify which file to import you can you know that's the file name go to browse and it's gonna ask me for my password and I set it to pass as I did earlier on all right, and I say include all extended keys. Uh, you know, go to next here. You can select this option automatically. Select certificate store. If this is, doesn't work, you gotta be ready to manually uh, come back and uh, make sure it's located in the right part. And one of the ways to do that is to go to your console, management console. Had the snapping certificate for computer, same place we went to earlier. Except that now I can look at my certificate over here and I can see this guy here. You understand? That's my ADFS, that certificate that I copied from here. You can copy this certificate and put it under your trusted root certificate. 
if you want. You can see it's not here yet, but I can paste it here. You understand? Hello, everybody got it? So I put it under my trusted root, you know, uh, certificate so that this guy would, would trust it. Uh, let's go back over to uh, the installation over here. This one looks to be done, but then I have to go and configure it. So go to next year. Uh, we're running out of time, so if there's not enough time, I'm gonna, we're gonna finish this up another time. So I can call this my uh, federation, you know, uh, name. Uh, you have to then go over to your ADFS here. Okay, here's my ADFS. And I have to bring up ADFS management. Because I don't know the name, you have to enter the right name. Because this web application proxy, remember, is for an ADFS, isn't it? So you have to be able to specify the ADFS that this thing is going to work with. So, anybody have questions so far? I want to make sure nobody have any questions that we haven't answered. All right. So the thing that we're going to be doing over here is now I need to find out what is my service name. Without knowing my service name. There's not much that you know we can do over here because the the machine that we set up require it. Does that make any sense? Go to edit uh, federation service provider here. If I go to edit here, you will see my federation service name. It's adfs.perkins.org. You see that? So I can copy that. adfs.perkins.com and then enter my credentials Perkins administrator okay option at sw0rd so now I have to come over here and select certificate if I didn't have a certificate I have another problem. You see that? Now the certificate have to be something that both of them can trust. And here is a big test now for us. If it doesn't trust certificate, we're going to have to go back and install a certificate that both of them can trust. Let's try and see if this guy trusted it now. He's going to ask to configure and he's going to try to use the certificate authority, certificate that we, we generate to talk with that ADFS server. Does that make any sense? If he's not able to talk with it, with that certificate, or the certificate doesn't necessarily match what he was expecting, then he's going to say, we cannot establish a trust. Because th this guy is going to try to establish a trust between itself and that guy with the certificate that only the two of them sort of know. Does that make any sense? And now it's successful. You understand what I'm saying? The reason this is successful is because I use the same certificate. You understand what I'm saying? That was on that guy. I install it on the, uh, the same certificate on the ADFS. I install it on the WAP and I had it as a certificate to the trusted root certificate list. In many cases, that is may not be a possible option. You might have to install, copy the certificate of, of WAP on the, on the ADFS and copy the ADFS on the WAP. Does that make any sense? That might be a better way to go. In other words, I may not want to give you or my certificate in a way I just wanted to trust it that's a long process we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later so now we have this web application we have no web application that are currently published okay so there are a couple of operations here that I can set up okay and if I set it up right 
ideally it should just work one of the things I could do is go to publish go to next and now it's asking me pre-authentication specify the pre-authentication method I can say Active Directory Federation Service in this case all on all on authenticated client requests are redirected to the Federation server after successful authentication by the ADFS client requests are forwarded to the back-end server you understand web application proxy can also provide credentials to backup to back-end server that are configured to use integrated Windows authentication so the way this one goes is essentially this guy take your credentials okay and it's going to redirect it it's just a redirection to your ADFS ADFS gets it ADFS is going to pass it to the active directory in the background does that make any sense? and that's generally the way it works with this option passed through there is no pre-authentication that is performed by the web proxy all requests are forwarded to the backend servers you know what I'm saying? In this case, this guy doesn't send it to ADFS. He just send it straight to the backend servers. ADFS will be out of the picture. Most of the time, this is what you want. You understand? If I were to do that, then I go to next. Then I have to select which type of pre-authentication to perform for this operation. I can say it's to be basic. What if I have a OAuth an app such as Windows Store apps or Microsoft Office client? I can go ahead and use OAuth here. And if I want to use Web plus uh, MS Office BA, I'm not going to go into this one with you guys. Um, probably will show you how that works later. Then I have to set up a Reliant Party and so on and so forth. I can set that up, but that is something we're going to be doing later on. You know, after the midterm. Okay, we'll be setting up a Reliant Party Trust, and if I want to quickly show you where that is, see, you have the Reliant Party Trust here, you have the uh, Claim Provider Trust, so the information that I get, that I set up from here, I will have to come over here and set it up on this guy, so this guy knows what to do with the information he's getting, and so on and so forth. Does that make any sense? And we're going to have our own application to publish and we're gonna go ahead and access that application from the web in your case by the time we do this on our microsoft azure you will have a public ip address so whatever it is you do in the class you'll be able to access your own website from home or from anywhere you won't even hold your own website part of the thing we, we can do in the class is set up your own website have a couple of pictures that you can put up there set up your own business maybe like pizza or whatever you want to Business, whatever business you want to set up and you can access it publicly so whatever it is we do on Microsoft Azure it will be something for real that you can actually uh, uh, demonstrate for a real business it won't be for something like we're doing in a VMware like this right? Uh, this is where we're going to stop so I hope this video will help you guys to uh, set up and install your own uh, web application proxy server uh, 